Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna. Today is April 2nd, 2018. It is a Monday. Uh, yesterday was Easter, so those who celebrated, I hope you had a lovely day. And um, this is a podcast about knitting and a little bit of sewing and some children's literature that has a fiber related content to it. So today I will have some uh, two finished objects, a half finished object, and two works in progress to share with you, along with some other things at the end, as well as our book. But before I get started, um, last podcast, I had a shawl on my mannequin back there, and I had several questions about uh, what shawl it was. And um, I usually forget to say, and um, I did put it up on the screen, but it was a quick thing, and I know when I'm listening to podcasts and knitting, I don't always see things that are written on the screen. So um, I did want to tell you a little bit about that shawl and about this one so that I don't forget that today. This shawl is called, um, and I probably will not pronounce this correctly, it's called Multnoma. It's by Kate Ray. It is a free pattern available on Ravelry. So I'll put the name down here so that if you're interested, you can find that. This is a single skein shawl, um, although if you wanted it to be bigger, you could just keep going. I used um, Malabrigo sock yarn for this in the velvet grape colorway, so that is a dark purple. And um, I used about um, 0.93 of the skein, and then I didn't think I had enough for another uh, repeat. So, um, but if you had more yarn, you could make it bigger. It was a very fun shawl. It was an easy lace pattern, and it starts off with um, just, I think, garter stitch at the top. So um, it's also a shawl that I think you could bead very easily, and there are many, many, many projects on Ravelry with this shawl. So um, that's what that shawl is. Now the one that was up last week is this green shawl, and it's also a single skein shawl, and I don't think you could get a, a too good of an idea from it being on the mannequin. So I do wanna show you, it's a variegated skein. This was, I believe, um, I'll pull it up in a second and give you exactly who, but you'll see there is a um, textured pattern here, a little bit of garter, some eyelets, a little bit of garter, a different textured pattern, um, some more of the um, eyelet, and that's all the way to the beginning. And what I like about this shawl an awful lot is this very edge and it really just knit stitches that kind of roll over, but it makes a nice little edge to the shawl. And it was a single skein. Now this shawl was last year around Mother's Day. This was a mystery knit along from the Periscoping Sisters, and they did it as a, a mystery knit along. So um, it was intended as a single skein. I do remember some people ran out, but you know, that just depends on your gauge and, um, so when anything's a single skein, um, if it's cutting it close, you really do have to watch your gauge. Otherwise, you know, when it's you have lots and lots of extra yarn, or then it's not a problem. But this always single skein shawl lets um, come close to the edge. I did not run out on either of these shawls. Um, but you know, you get down to um, pretty close. I will say there is a little note, I believe, on my project page. I always have a project page for everything. Um, there's a little note on that page about um, the pattern itself. I know there was confusion from some people. The uh, designers wanted this, Amy and Debbie wanted this to be um, an easy, stress-free sort of um, a pattern. And there are indeed places where if you know you're off a little bit, it can still work out. But there was a place where there was a stitch count and then the next row, the pattern doesn't fit. And um, for me, when something doesn't fit, then I think I made a mistake. So I'm ripping out and all. And ultimately it came up, if you just did something simple, you know, it, it worked fine. But you may just want to make note of maybe some people's project pages if you decide to do this shawl. Um, you can see it was a variegated um, green and it was by Artistic Lily. Let me get you the details. So yes, this is Artistic Lily Feel Good 4-Ply Superwash Fingering Weight Yarn, and I did use 0.95 of the skein, um, just having a, a few ounces left over. The color is called Eyes on the Forest, and the name of this shawl was A Mother's Heart, so by um, Debbie Reese, if you're looking up. She's one of the 
two periscoping sisters. So that was that shawl and this shawl. So if you had any interest in those, um, sorry to uh, not have said something last time. And now let's start with our finished objects, or my finished objects. I guess we're not going to hear yours. Um, and I did finish my third time's the charm shawl. And it's by um, Elizabeth Davis de Jerez. And mine was done in vivid yarn. And I had this much of the royal purple left and this much of the stardust left. So I was trying to use it all, um, but I really wanted the dark at the end. So I did make a modification. Um, <clears throat> what I ultimately could have done was the next repeat should be this. And I did have enough yarn for it, but I didn't think I did. So I thought, well, we'll just do some um, garter. And so that's what I did till I thought, oh, I better stop so I have enough for the bind off. And really, I think I would have had enough to do more. But I did do garter stitch, but then the last, um, I did a knit row, then I did a purl row on the back side, and then I bound off, which takes makes that bind off kind of roll towards the front, which was what I wanted it to do. So let's see if I can get you. There are pictures on my project page and, and at the beginning in, of the podcast. It's a very long crescent, so it can do a lot of wrapping. I think it was over 80 inches long, so no way I can show you all of that at once. And very easy, just, you know, you get started and you're doing this pattern and then you switch up and do two colors and a new pattern, then you go to the other color and it's, so it repeats this, 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 and this. So you've got the solid purple, the two colors together the uh, with the slip stitches, and then the, the uh, contrast color, and then you're striping both colors. And then it starts over again. So it should have stopped here, but I did have enough yarn to do more. In fact, I had, you know, even more of this. But I thought, I'd, since it started with purple, I'd end with purple, and I'm really pleased with it. So um, give that shawl a try. If um, Two skeins, used almost all of both of them. So that was my first finished object. The second finished I, object that I have is a pair of socks. If you watch the podcast, you might remember that the last episode I talked about my little experiment I was doing on my gauge and my speed with different styles of knitting socks. And... Um, I don't like that feeling then of having lots of stuff sitting there that's not getting done. And there I had five pair of socks not getting done because you know, I just can't work on five at a time. So in my head, I had this plan that I would um, Monday work on one and then Tuesday and, and five days during the week. That would be my um, morning knitting and, and maybe an hour or so in the evening. And that eventually I'd get done. But someone, um, a, a, a viewer, wrote a comment and said, Hey, you know, just work on a pair at a time and get them done. And I thought, I'm going to do that. So that's what I'm doing. And I think that was terrific advice for me. Because it's as if I'm just sort of forgetting about those others. And when I get to them, it's, it's great because it's like, okay, I'm starting a pair of socks, but I've already got a great head start. So I think that was excellent advice. But um, the first pair that I finished is this pair. These were all cozy knitter. All of um, the socks that I cast on for my little experience, experiment were Cozy Knitter. And this color is called Be My Bell. So let me show you the Be My Bell from the Cozy Knitter. It's the Bliss Base. And um, when you buy this, you get 85 grams of the self-striping. And then you also get a 30-gram mini. So this had the blue color was in the mini. So by giving you that 30 gram mini, you definitely have enough for heels, cuffs, and toes on both socks. I could have made a much longer cuff on these. I didn't just because it was an experiment. Well, I never make a very long one anyway, but um, it was the experiment. I just wanted to get to the knitting um, stockinette part, but I still had this much left and I did do heels, cuffs, and toes on both. <clears throat> Excuse me. This was the pair I was doing magic loop. And um, I did continue doing Magic Loop, but um, I might have mentioned to you, well, I did mention that um, one reason I was curious about my gauge was just something that had happened with a pair of my Addy needles um, being actually marked 
um, in two different sizes. A US size was different from the millimeter size of European sizing. And, um, but when I, that had happened to me, I did go out and buy a different pair of Addy sock rockets and I got them um, on, in this case, the packaging only listed the millimeters. So I got the 2.25, which is the US one that I wanted. So I actually switched needles and went from the Chai Goo, which I really love, to that Addy needle because the actual stitching is, um, the needles, they're so slick um, that they um, go along faster. So I did switch and it didn't seem to make any impact on my gauge at all. I still got eight stitches to the inch and um, 11 rows to the inch. So I like these, they're a little bit short. And that was my fault because as I was knitting the first one, I got to, oh, maybe around here. And I thought, you know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the heel in now. And that way I can keep trying it on and decide when I'm gonna put this because I wanted to be sure it was blue down here at the bottom. I wasn't gonna make it the striped. So I got to there and I went, okay, let me go ahead and do that. So I go back where I was gonna do it or think where I was gonna do it and get the needles run through, cut the thread, knit the heel, and then go back to knitting the rest of the foot. And um, I think I had in my mind, I knew about how many inches I needed to go. I usually, when I try it on, I'll put a little uh, stitch marker there and say, okay, I've got two inches more to go before I start the, the toe. And so then I can just measure from there. So I don't have to keep trying it on. That's why I do that. Well, all of a sudden I thought, oh, that's looking really close, but I hadn't been knitting for that long. So I put it on my foot and I was nearly at the toe and realized I had meant to put the heel in at this blue stripe and I picked up the wrong one. So it made a shorter leg, not terribly shorter than I normally do, but it is shorter than I had intended it to be. So then the second one went even faster because they're shorter. Anyway, I'm very happy with them, fits great. Um, I, I like the colors an awful lot. So um, I did finish my first pair of those experiment socks. Okay, so now we will go on to what I've, I'm working on now or works in progress. My first work in progress is I'm halfway done and that is um, another pair of socks from my experiment. So I finished one pair and I finished the first sock of a second pair and um, this pink is pretty bright, but I, on my screen it here, at least, it looks a little bit brighter than it really is. Um, but um, very um, vibrant colorway, again, um, Cozy Knitter, Bliss Base. This colorway is called Summer Lovin', and all the details are the same um, with the yardage that you get, and you get the, the 30 gram mini skein. So two things that I did differently with this pair of socks. The first is, um, whenever I do a heel flap and um, gusset, I've always done one of the slip stitch heels. So either just a regular slip stitch or the eye of partridge. They're, um, they make this part of the sock stronger, but also a little bit tighter because slip stitches always pull in a little bit. So um, I decide this is not a wear area for me for two reasons. One, when I wear my hand knit socks, I normally wear them with clogs. So there is no friction on the back of my foot from the clogs. And the second is I wear them around the house a lot with um, no shoes on since I don't wear shoes in the house and my wear comes up on the bottom because of course I'm wearing them <clears throat> out against the floor. But what I did differently here was I just did it stockinette and that makes it go much faster and um, I don't need that extra there. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. I also like the way it, it is, doesn't kind of pull in right here as much. The second thing that I did differently was I used a square or Dutch heel. I'd never done that heel turn before and um, I did like it. I had read that you end up with fewer gusset decreases and I liked that idea. Um, as being faster but then still giving you that space that you need right here and I really like the fit on these on my foot I have a really high arch and that seemed to be enough better than the afterthought heel but not quite as much work as you know the different um, I think I usually do. Oh, I don't know the name of the one I usually do I would have said just the regular one but I don't think there is such a thing there's just so many different kinds which incidentally those are two of my 
very, well, three favorite things I love about socks is I love to turn the heel. To me, that's just so magical. Your stitches are going this way and now they're going this way and I, I just love it. I love where you, the look of where you pick up the stitches here, just that the stitches are going this way and then this way. I think it's kind of magical and I like the way that looks on a sock. So call me weird. I don't know. A little bit longer leg on this. I, I like this length um, quite a bit. And this was a, the pair I was doing on, on DPNs. All my needles were size one. They were all Chai Goo needles. So I've got uh, this much of a start. Um, again, going to finish them off with the DPNs. So that's my half finished object that um, I'm working on. And um, here's what it looks like. Um, but you know, I don't think that really looks that much like this. Um, this, this is, sorry about all that yarn. Um, I don't know. Just doesn't, it looks more vibrant here. And of course this purple as a contrast really makes a big difference. So my next finished, ob uh, finished object, work in progress, is something that I um, hadn't talked about hadn't planned to do. You might have, um, if you're a frequent podcast watcher, um, knows a lot of podcasters and a lot of people I've seen on Instagram at the beginning of the year posted their make nine or talked about, you know, what nine projects they'd like to do this year. And I'm, I, I love that people can do that. I, I wish I was one of those people. But I find when I plan ahead that much that then I feel obligated to do that and when things come along that aren't part of that then I get a little anxious because I want to do them so I had no intention whatsoever of doing this um, mystery knit along I sort of decided not to do any more mystery knit alongs I've done a lot of them and I have by and large just been so pleased with every I think there's only one that uh, didn't really please me and um, I haven't been able to pawn it off on anyone else either. So um, by and large, I'm very happy with doing mystery knit alongs, but I just decided, I think I'll just pick things that I know what it's gonna look like and maybe I can make a slightly better yarn choice. Um, and then this one came along and I still said I wasn't gonna do it until I heard the name and was reading the concept. And that's of course a Curious Handmade Impressionist Mystery Knit Along that just started on Saturday. And when I started looking in the thread um, over in the Curious Handmade group, I just saw people's inspiration pictures and um, I've been working on something that's not an impressionist pick painting, but the work is, you know, semi-impressionistic to me. And I thought, you know what? I could dye my own yarn and maybe this would be really fun. So I decided to take the plunge and do it. So it's the Curious Handmade Impressionist Mystery Knit Along. And you can, of course, still join it. Just started. It's going to be four clues. It is a crescent-shaped shawl. And I've made many of her crescent-shaped shawls. And as I said, it's the Impressionist um, is the, the name of this Mystery Knit Along. Well, this is what I've been working on using this fabric and making... Um, some bags and it's part of really a, a long story um, you can see this is a larger bag than I usually made it's not the three zipper bag um, but it, it there's a story behind it that um, I, I might get to today but I decided with this these colors which are some of my very favorite colors that um, and I had already been dyeing some yarn for it, but I thought, no, I'm going to dye it specifically for this because you need a light shade, a medium shade, and a dark shade. And they can be somewhat variegated. There will be lace. But um, so anyway, I did dye some yarn. My light color, this is my first color. And you'll see it just um, some, some tonal shades of um, violet. I would say. And I think that's reminiscent of the background of the fabric. So this is my first color. The second color is supposed to be a medium shade. And so this has some purples and a little bit of orchid. And this is trying to pull in this bit of color here. It's not showing exactly the same. This is looking a little brighter. What you see on the screen is a little brighter than this actually is. Now, the third shade 
which I had totally was committed to and I love. I absolutely love all the colors that are in there. And um, I thought to myself, oh, that goes really well. But then last night, as I was knitting, I had these stacked up. The bag was there, there on my hassock. And the light changed and I thought, you know what? This is more, more blue than purple, even though purple's there. So um, I've got some yarn downstairs cooling. I dyed some this morning trying to go uh, still maybe just about this dark, but a little more blue than purple. So um, I don't think I'm going to use this, although it depends. When that dries, I, I'll look at both and just decide what I'm going to use because I really do the, like this. I liked all three together. But um, let me show you what I've done so far. I am between 10 and 15% done. Um, Helen Stewart's patterns always give you a percentage so you know where you are, which can help with yarn management. I'm not paying attention to that at all because um, I have never run out on hers. And you don't use, um, I think you only use like 90% of, of the third color. And the others are even less of the color. So I, I shouldn't have a problem. So this is, um, of course, on the needles. And this is the top and the right side. So you can see that you're striping in the second color. And right here, this is a, a more a closer stripe of the second color. Um, the first clue does have up to 30% of the shawl. And I kind of like that because I'll feel a little bit more like, you know, instead of it just being 25% of the shawl, you've got a little bit of a head start and maybe... Okay, I had a little interruption there. Um, I, I filmed the podcast on my iPad, and I have an iPhone. And sometimes when I get a call in from the iPhone, it comes into the iPad. So it just cuts me off, and I have to take the call. There's no choice. So anyway, we, I got interrupted there. Don't remember exactly what I was saying. So um, anyway, um, I... I'm, I'm, I know I was talking about 30% being the uh, amount of this first clue, and I would like to get to that point, so I'll feel like maybe I have a little bit of a head start. Um, I won't. I don't always feel like I'm in a pickle over mystery knit-alongs, except once when I think I had four or maybe five going on at the same time, and then I did because I wasn't keeping up with the clues, and that kind of bugged me. So um, that's my second work in progress right now. If you're a frequent watcher of the podcast, you'll know that I don't share most of the things that, I'm out, that I purchase, um, except as I work them into projects. But I did order something recently that I would like to share because I think it's such a marvelous idea. I really like to see people take their talents um, when they're trying to raise money for a specific project, if they have a talent that they can use to raise their money. I just really like to support that. So um, I recently received a pair of Salbu mitten blockers and they are lovely and handmade. You can see the detail there of those snowflake designs. I like the shape because that is the shape of the Salbu mittens and I really am going to get back to knitting some sal some more Salbu mittens. But these are I came from Knitography and that's Patricia Fortune on Instagram. She's P Fortune and I'll put this down here for you. And um, what sh she lives in Norway and is trying to raise money um, in support of a little farm that they're trying to um, established as a working farm and you can learn more about that on her project website which I will also put up here for you so I don't know if she still um, have has this going on I think most likely so I thought I would show you if you have seen that or had any interest I just thought maybe if you saw them you'd see what um, a lovely object they are and um, well done and I hope that um, you're successful in all of your ventures with these Salbu mitten blockers so now it's time to share our fiber-related lit children's literature book. And today's book is a very new book. It was published in 2017, and it is called A Bedtime Yarn by Nicola Wynn Stanley, illustrated by Olivia Chen Muller. And this is a sweet story about a little bear named Frankie. And Frankie um, sleeps in his own room, in his own bed, but he's a little bit afraid when he goes to sleep every night. In part, he has the feeling that... Um, he's going to drift away. And so his mother has started knitting a project and she has him hold the ball of yarn and he feels very tethered to the earth as if he can't really float away if he's holding onto the ball of yarn. And 
out in the other room, he hears the clickety clack of his mother's knitting needles as she's knitting a surprise for him. He doesn't know what, what the surprise will be, and he will find out when he's ready to let go of the ball of yarn and just go to sleep without it. So she is busy knitting, and the ball of yarn, of course, as it gets used. Sorry for another interruption. Doorbell rang. We have... um. We had some really significant wind here several weeks ago and um, we lost some trees and um, we have somebody coming to take out uh, the trees. So they're here, which is great news. Um, just I didn't expect them to ring the bell as they said I didn't even need to be here. So anyway, back to our story. So Frankie has, um, so he's a different color ball of yarn every night. And when he holds a different color, it makes him dream of things in that color. And I like that part where he's holding an orange ball of yarn and he, you know, he dreams of orange things. And so it goes on and tells you about his different dreams. Towards the end, he decides he is ready to go to sleep without his ball of yarn. So his mother says, okay, I'll knit in the last color. And then you can see what she's, what I've been working on. And... She has been working on a lovely blanket for him of many colors. And so now he can sleep with that every night and have those same dreams with his yarn. So I think it's a very sweet story about a knitted blanket. And I know a lot of people are knitting, you know, cozy memory blankets and other kinds of log cabin blankets and what have you. And so if you are knitting that for someone special, and someone small, this might be a nice little book to put together when you give that uh, gift to the recipient. So this is a bedtime yarn. And now it's time for a giveaway. Normally I do the giveaway for the sock knitting um, every other podcast, but I had been so long last time between podcasts that I thought I'd go ahead and do one again this time so that maybe it'll be actually more caught up. So today, um, when I looked at the thread, we were up to entry number 453, and I started at 385. So when I put those numbers in, I came up with number 399. That was in a random number generator, and that is Tucker Dory, perhaps. And let me show you the socks that um, she created. Right there and um, she says they are her vanilla scrappy socks with an afterthought heel and she used some minis that she got in an advent swap so um, Tucker Dory if you will get hold of me through a private message on Ravelry I will send you this Cascade Yarns Heritage Prince is a sock yarn 75% super wash merino 25% nylon and I think this makes a, a pattern they show you here. I don't know if you can get a good look at that. So it's um, not self-striping, but self-patterning yarn. So this is Cascade Heritage Prints. So um, please get hold of me as soon as you can, and then I will get this out in the mail to you. And while we're talking about the giveaways, um, one of our viewers, um, who's, I guess I would call a Ravelry friend, I've never met in person, but um, her name is Joyce, and she um, asked me if I would be interested in um, some particular particular yarns and she was destashing that she was destashing and she sent me a picture and I said of course you know I, I kind of had a little idea in the back of my mind for those and then she said all these other yarns just hopped in the box too so she sent me just a, a, a amazing number of yarns um, and um, actually took two boxes <laughs> to send and I'm so appreciative um, she did suggest that I could use some of them for giveaways and I am going to do that although it is really hard, um, but I th for our next sock uh, yarn, um, so keep entering socks in that finished object thread, and remember if they're self-striping, self-patterning, or you are self-striping or patterning them, then please um, enter them twice for uh, additional chances to win. But I am going to offer this lovely yarn here. It's called Kiss Tangerine from Two Guys Yarn Company, and um, it is a fingering weight yarn. It's on a Tweety Toes sock base, 85% Superwash BFL, 15% Donegal Neps, and it's 435 yards. And um, it's a, a really lovely color. So um, this will be our next um, sock giveaway. And I'm not gonna show you everything that she sent because it was um, it's a little overwhelming, but I did want to um, show you that a few things that were for socks. and. 
I have wanted some of this Opposites Attract yarn for a long time. It's by Barking Dog Yarns. It's an 80-20 merino nylon yarn. And what they do is they take the same colors, but in different proportions. So the colors that are in this skein are in this one too. And the colors in this one are in this one, but just at a different percentage. So they make a coordinated pair of socks. And I, just something about that concept is so exciting to me. I'm just so curious to see how it knits up and what kind of a coordinated pair of socks you'll get. So I'm really excited to um, try this yarn. And that was one of the sock yarns. And um, another two that she sent me were Barocco Comfort sock which aren't the colors just gorgeous and it is extremely soft yarn and um, what I like about this is that it is 50% uh, fine nylon and 50% acrylic so nylon and acrylic I make socks for my daughter and she felt them mm, yeah it's a little annoying so um, I thought, hey, next time I want to make her a pair of socks, that might be the perfect yarn to try because if she washes and dries them, maybe they won't felt since they're not wool. So um, th those are a few things. And then one more for socks that um, I thought was really cool was this here, which is... Um, it's 70 total grams, so it's for making a shorty pair of socks. So you've got some contrast, and then that cool green is also mixed here with blue. And I love blues and greens together, so um, this is this is really fun. Um, I might offer it as a prize. Um, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. So, Joyce, thank you so much. That was so very generous of you, and um, way more than I would ever have expected. It felt really like another Christmas Day here. So we're coming to a part of the podcast that um, may not stay in. Um, we'll see if I can get through it or not. But um, last, um, last year, um, a week before Thanksgiving, uh, my dear friend Jean um, uh, suffered a, a ruptured aneurysm. And um, we did think that she was going to pull through all of that. And ultimately, th though, she did... <clears throat> passed away two days before Christmas and um, that it's been hard is you know obviously needless to say she was um, my dearest friend and um, I'm trying to remain grateful and that is what I'm grateful for today is that for 27 years um, I had a wonderful friend named Jean and um, I think of her so very much and that is um, the project I was talking to you about with um, this fabric and this bag is, um, first, Jean was um, d crafty in many, many ways, but she didn't knit, she didn't sew, and, the, and I was, I'm crafty in many ways too, and those are two things that I do that uh, she didn't do, but she was my biggest cheerleader and supporter, and in fact, watch the podcast, though she doesn't knit, um, she said she liked watching it, and she felt like we were visiting, and... Um, so the very last time we were together, in fact, I, I was sharing the podcast with her. And the last time I talked to her is when she told me she had gone back and watched all of them. But one of my memories of Jean is um, around the first time we met, um, I was at her house and um, she had uh, grew hydrangeas and had them in the house in a, a lovely uh, blue vase. And so hydrangeas were something because she had these these bushes, these shrubs in her yard, um, and she would always have the fresh cut flowers when they were blooming. And I've never been able to grow them, though I have just bought some, and I'm going to try um, in her honor and memory to grow them, and I hope I'm successful. But I, I am uh, one way that I haven't had to deal with a lot of grief in my life, and uh, but one way that has been helpful for me, I know when uh, Two of my dogs passed away my daughter and I put together scrapbooks it was of them and it helped us just remember happy times and so that's what I'm trying to do is remember happy times and um, I thought maybe if I made something it would it would help me deal with this so I have been making um, this is my prototype bag um, that I have been making and I am working on getting some made and also dyeing. I've dyed quite a bit of yarn that will coordinate with these colors as they're the hydrangea colors. So this is something that um, 
will be coming soon. Um, I will be announcing a shop update um, as I, I, I'm, I'm more than three quarters way through the project. So um, it should be maybe by the next podcast, I will be announcing that. But um, I thought I'd see if I could get through this today and um, tell you about it and that uh, there is something coming up um, in honor of my very special friend, Jean. Well, I think that uh, about draws everything to a close. If I've forgotten something, um, perhaps I can come back and edit it in. But for now, I'm going to thank you all for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, I hope there was something that you found interesting. If you're a returning viewer, again, as always, thank you so much for coming back and spending some time with me. I enjoy it so much and I, I love hearing from you all. And um, happy knitting, happy crafting, have fun. Bye-bye.